everyone, it's Kim from Love Your Design here. How are you feeling? I'm feeling very tired. I wanted to um, take you on a little tour of the human design chart to give you some sense of what's going on. Firstly, if you just look at the way the um, transit chart, this is for right now while I'm doing the video, um, and the transit chart shows that the energy is, there's a lot of energy up here. So you can almost feel this uh, pulling up uh, and potentially you can be in a lot of anxiety if your mind is trying to make sense of things. Now, don't do that because <laughs> I'll explain why. These, the three gates, all three gates up in the um, head center or the crown chakra are activated at the moment. Pluto's in gate 61. It's there for three years. That's a kind of a background information. Um, but the the sun is in 64, which is here, and the earth is in 63, which is here. Now, these two gates are programming partners or complementary a complementary pair. They work in tandem. They work together. Um, you know that Tai Chi symbol with the yin and the yang? That's how these gates work together. They, they are complementary. 63 and 64 are the last two hexagrams of the I Ching. 63 says, it took me years to figure this out, 63 says we're done, everything's finished, it's all over. And 64 says there's this sense of something, a transition, something calling us. So when the sun and the earth, as they are every year at this time, are in this 64 and 63, what they're saying is we can ground ourselves, the earth, we can ground ourselves in the knowing that something's done. And the 64, the sun, says that our personal development comes from being attuned to the inspiration that's coming in about where we go next. And I want to read you a quote from um, a book called Thus Spoke the Plant, A Remarkable Journey of Groundbreaking Scientific Discovery and Personal Encounters with Plants by Monica Gagliano, who is an Italian plant scientist working in Australia. And she says, um, the greatest insanity of this merry-go-round is that the loop we have invented has no possible internal resolution. This anxious feeling of not being safe is a necessary stipulation with our contract for the need to control. But there is no loophole to be found and then we don't know what to do. Um, and she says in her, in her experiment, it wasn't working and she didn't know what she was going to do. Once faced with this death, dead end, what if we stopped and waited in the darkness like I had to that day when her experiment didn't work? As we relax in the belly of the unknown and hand ourselves over to life, what if we discovered a surprise in clarity to see what is truly happening and what needs to be done? By dropping our obsession for controlling life, the whole fiction about being unsafe drops away too. Left with nothing to protect or attack, the loop comes undone. So there's this, uh, this is spot on for this 63, 64. What if we don't try and resolve? What if we don't try and keep control? What if we sit in the, the belly of the darkness and wait for something new to come forth? And that's the energy now. Now, as I said, each year at this time, the sun and earth are in the 64 and the 63. But what's particularly different about this year is that Mercury, Venus and Mars are also in this channel here, this 6447 channel. Now, this channel is sometimes known as the channel of confusion. And I just want to speak to that because this is, I think, um, fundamental to understanding the way this energy works. This is a right brain energy. Remember, this is called a body graph. It's not just a chart like a, a, a zodiac chart. This actually shows the circuitry that, that is actually physically operating in your body. So at the moment, we all have this activation of the right part of our brain, which is uh, uh, visual which is symbolic, which is emotionally based, which is based in story, which activates um, the whole story of who we are, the whole story of, of our lives. It's not something that we can pin down logically or rationally, if there is such a thing as logical rationality. I'm not convinced of that. <laughs> um, uh, well, it, there is, but it doesn't operate in a vacuum without this side of things. Now, the important thing about this is if you rush to try to pin things down, rush to try to have certainty, if you are pushing to try to take control of things, get your mind under control, you're going to um, just get more and more anxious. 
it takes time for the certainty to come. It takes time for the mental clarity to come when this channel is activated or when you, if you have this channel in your design or part of it. So at the moment, what we're doing, we're sitting in this process and we're not at the, the place in the loop yet where we come out into the new, but it's not far away, only a couple of days. Now, to make it really um, even more fun, Gate 47, so remember I said 64 and 63 are um, what, Gene, what Gene Keys calls programming partners and what I call complementary, complementary gates. These are complementary gates. The complementary gate for gate 47 is down here in the 22. And look what's what's here, Neptune, planet of confusion. <laughs> when, you know, when Neptune, ne when Neptune turns up, we have to wait for clarity. And Neptune is also in the solar plexus center where we have to wait for clarity. So there is a sense at the moment that things are being stirred up, that there's a, a an ups, upgrading of consciousness happening and particularly for most of us, a sense that there is something coming free of, I just want to come back to the 22 for a minute, coming free for, from a kind of enculturated um, veiling of, from the truth. So just to be clear about that, that wasn't probably very clear. That was probably a bit Neptunian. Um, what I mean by that is that um, gate 22 talks about beauty but it talks about the essence of beauty so it's not so much that um, uh, it, it's more of a felt sense of beauty so if I look at something I can feel in my body that it's beautiful there's an essential connection with beauty that we all have uh, one of the most important things for me about this is that we have been taught our, our natural physical response to beauty has been conditioned away from what we feel in our body to something that's enculturated, you know, a lipstick colour or a, a particular type of um, shoe or these are the examples that I use with Venus, you know, the lipstick and the shoe and, and how we disempower that powerful response to life. So uh, what happens with the 22 is we have this kind of shell that is a false sense of grace, a false sense of beauty, and inside that we have the essence. So as well as this 63, 64 thing that says we're done, something's complete, I wonder where we're going now. We're going to sit in this space, this um, this kind of interrog interregnum. I don't know how to say that word. I shouldn't have started off with it, should I? Um, we're sitting in this space, this transitional space, this liminal space between what's finished and what hasn't begun yet. And gate 22, Neptune says, I'm going to refine the energy. I'm going to lift the energy up. And um, and in that way, I'm going to release something more essential, something that is more aligned with grace, with true beauty, um, and, and then something is going to be released and something new is going to come into your life. In the meantime, you probably need to pull back into yourself a bit and give yourself a little bit more time alone, a little bit more time for rest and contemplation than usual. So um, in response to what a lot of people have written to me, no, you're not going mad. This is actually um, really affecting everyone that I speak to on a, a quite a profound level. Okay, so I'll talk to you soon. Kim at Love Your Design. See you later. Bye.